<laughs> okay. I don't know you, re- you ready? Yes. You ready? Okay. Always. All right. Welcome back to the Backcountry PA Podcast. We're recording this on September 26th. Um, this will be a pure rut episode. Um, talking about the rut, how we're going to set up, and all that kind of good jazz. Um, season is about... Ten day, nine days away right now as we speak. Eight days and a wake up. So on this episode, pretty much the topics we're going to be breaking down of what we're going to be doing and how our mindset is going into the rut, all that kind of good stuff. Because you have people that hunt just pure rut, right? Mm-hmm. You have those people. You have people who are hardcore. You have people that are hardcore into it. And you have people who are like dabbling in it but are learning from it. And I feel like we're learning slowly as we go. That's not my phone. Oh, I got pictures on the cell camera. That's fine. I'm just gonna. You have the that. weather. You good? You good with the weather? You know the weather from November. Nope. That's okay. why I kept it up here. Yeah, that's didn't why want I did. To go off. <laughs> so, pretty much the topics we're gonna be covering in this um, is our rut hunting strategies, uh, the gear we're gonna be running, how we're gonna set up, um, the the calling techniques we may be using, may not be using, scents mm-hmm. we may be using, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, stories that we have from that experience. Prep for all day hunts, which it, it sounds easy enough, but like all day hunts suck. Oh, they really do. Yeah, they do. Like I absolutely hate them. Like I know my wife hates all day hunts, and I'm I tell her like I'm like I do not want to do all day hunts. Like I would rather just hunt a morning or an evening. Like before when we first started the podcast, I was mm-hmm. I was a hundred percent on board with all day hunts. I was like, the only way you get a deer is if you do all day hunts. Yep. And I would get on your ass about that nonstop. I was like, dude, you're not seeing deer because you're not sitting there long enough. But yep. that could be the case for you, honestly. That might be, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> could be. But like all day hunts are not easy to do, especially when you're mobile hunting, mm-hmm. when you're sitting in a stand. Um, it just it's different for everyone. Especially you know? if you're not seeing anything for several hours at right. a time and you're just like oh my god I just mentally how do you go about that you know how yeah. do you how do you keep mentally fresh to, mm-hmm. to be ready to like in case something happens because you know in the rut you see one doe screaming by you you better be ready you better be ready with that bow <laughs> yep. boy like you better bow boy. <laughs> bow boy bow boy bow <laughs> boy bow boy it's gone uh, yeah so like we'll, we'll cover that a little bit uh, you know we're not experts in it obviously but no. yet we We've, you know, we've been hunting since we're 11, 12 years old. So like we've had experience with all day hunts or, you know, recently a lot more rut hunting activity, that kind of stuff. Um, tales from camp also, it might not be our tales, but it might be, you know, our dads or someone who we've Mm -hmm. talked to their tale. Um, and then we're going to, at the very end, we're going to talk, we have two questions that we're going to really dive into kind of cover. And it's, it's a very, it's a hot topic and it's. You're gonna have to tune in for it. You're Ooh. gonna have to keep listening to find out what exactly that is because it's it's a cool. I, I I'm confused about it honestly. Like I don't know what I would do now. There's certain situations where my my decision would change, right? Mm-hmm. But we'll we'll get into that at the very end. So to start off the episode, I'm Cody. I'm Ethan. There we go. We in, introduced stuff. So hope you know who we are. Yeah. <laughs> rut hunting strategies for 2024. Mm. This this is gonna be based around the October twenty eighth because this is when it's gonna release. So okay. October twenty eighth to November fourth is when it's gonna be releasing. Now you can stretch it out to November seventh, right? Like October twenty eighth to November seventh is like a perfect time frame for that peak peak rut time frame. I think like that's when everything's firing. You know, you have the end of October where you have these does coming in or the mature does, big does, sexy mm-hmm. does coming in. And you have <laughs> you have those you have those young bucks pushing them around, but then you also have the mature bucks wanting to get some get it in too, right? Yep. You have all this mixture of testosterone, estrin in the woods, and it's like, man, this is just like too much. Like we don't smell it, obviously. Well, sometimes you do if you shoot one, you walk up and you're like, Holy fuck, like you, this is you'll know. You, this is this buck was rutted up. Like this one right here, actually. This is the hit buck by FedEx. Oh yeah. He was he I was like, Man, you are rank. Yeah, he was right. ready. He, he was, was like, he's probably chasing too, and that's why oh, I got 100% hit. Percent, he was like his neck was thick. Yeah, like with two K's. Yeah, K. Thick? Yeah. Oh, I was just going for C's. T H I C K, brother. K. Oh, no C's. No three K's either. Yeah, we don't. No. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, good, <laughs> we don't do that. Good, good catch. On We're not about that. <laughs> um, so wow. Um, so for that peak right t- rut time frame. 
what what's your what's your kind of like mindset? What what are you thinking going in? Like what's your mindset right out of the bat out of the waking up that morning? What time are you waking up going out there? Hmm. Like do you already have a, a a spot already pre-hung? You going in mobile, you like Hopefully. what's going on? This this my answers are from a 100% inexperienced uh rut hunter here and so don't we have uh, those we have that we have those people too like don't take anything like, and from you know don't write the, don't don't put this in stone and say yeah. ethan said it so it's you know I, <laughs> see i like i like that because the difference about us and a lot of other podcasts is we're not we don't want to pretend to be something we're not like we're not experts at all we yeah. just i'm barely had, an amateur we, we've had 150 <laughs> guests on that we've learned a lot from oh absolutely and we try and transfer that into the field mm-hmm. so that we can possibly be successful in that in that in that category so it could be the right it could be pre right it could be the early season it could be the first day you mm-hmm. know it just doesn't matter but like any that's why i found like even you ethan being you know a novice you know, like yeah, you're still trying to learn. You're still trying to grow. Like you're, you're trying to you're you're not fully invested. Put it that way into whitetails. You know what I mean? Right. Like you're more just about getting out there, enjoying it, enjoying nature, going small game hunting, going fishing, just enjoying everything about it. So I mean, you have those people though, and that's okay. Yeah. Like everyone who listens to this and like, man, I I gotta be the best. I gotta be like really good. You don't have to be the best. Be the best you you can be. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. A little, little tug on the heartstrings there. I like that one. A little flutter, a little flutter action. So, Ethan, so let's break it down. So, Mm -hmm. what time you waking up? Let's let's start from the whole cabin, man. Let's whole cabin. What time you waking up? What are you eating? What are you packing to go out in the woods with you? I mean, you you save the packing and the food you're taking out in the woods with you for when we do the all day hunt. Yeah, yeah. Let's save that. So, like, let's do breakfast, all that kind of jazz. Well, gotta have some our grounds coffee. That's a must. That'll wake that'll wake me up. Let me tell you, first, side note, before I get into that, I was up at the cabin for a whole week. Mm-hmm. Last, two weeks ago. Yeah. I had to think about what day it is. Yeah. <laughs> two weeks ago. It is so nice to wake up in the morning and have coffee with breakfast. Yeah, like yeah. a normal person. Yeah. Not, instead of constantly not, drinking not coffee at nighttime. Yeah. I, I, I can feel that. It felt fantastic. Let me tell you. I can you. feel that. But, hunting. Um, I'm waking up. I mean, it's it's going to be. Well, here's the thing. I'll it look all what dep- time this? What time it? Uh, the sun rises. Keep going. Oh, it's like six at the after November fourth. Hunt time is roughly six fifteen a.m. Roughly. Mm. Oh yeah. I makes, looked it yeah. up just out of curiosity yep. because opening day it's like six forty mm-hmm. six forty five up at the cabin. Mm-hmm. Roughly. So I I want. I was just curious. So I looked yeah. it up. Yeah. Um. So shooting lights, let's just say six fifteen for argument's sake. I'm waking up at dark o'clock for sure. Okay. Um, and I'd like to get. Hopefully, I have a spot already picked out. I'd right. like to have a spot picked out, mm-hmm. and I think is good to go. Um, if I can get to my stand within, I'd say half an hour okay. prior to that shooting light, I'm happy. Or yep. even. I mean, how there's even times where I get to the stand or I'm going up the tree as it's starting to get, like, that gray light. You can't hunt yet, but you can actually see things. Mm -hmm. I don't think it, I really don't think it makes that big of a difference Mm -hmm. during this time frame. Because Mm -hmm. if they're rutted up and they're running, they don't don't give a shit. They're just running. Yeah. Right? Yep. So that's about, and then staying out as late as possible. Mm -hmm. Or there are times where I'm just like, okay, it's going to start getting dark. Maybe I should leave the woods now. I'm not a fan of walking in the woods in the dark by myself. Right. Like, if it was, like, right. me and you, mm-hmm. I have no pro- – or, like, me and my dad or whatever. Mm-hmm. I have zero issues. I don't give a shit. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock at night. I'm walking through the woods. Mm-hmm. No big deal. By myself? <laughs> You can forget about it. <laughs> this is why I like going, getting to my spot as it's getting light. Yeah. And leaving – where that it's like that questionable light time where right. it's like eh, I shouldn't shoot anything, but mm-hmm. yet if it's within like fifteen yards, I can mm-hmm. easily identify it. I'm hunting my way out, yeah, and getting the hell out of the woods. <laughs> see, like I I can see that during rifle season because yeah. like when you walk out, it's like okay, you could jump something, all that kind of stuff, right? 
But Archer, man, like I'm staying there till dark o'clock. Like oh I'm saying, where I can't even see my sight anymore, and I have the I have a sight that that mm-hmm. lights up. So like, yeah. if I can't see my sight anymore, I'm done. Oh, that that questionable one though. No, 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 that one, no, no. no. <laughs> I was gonna say no. we gotta clarify that no. real quick for that the listeners. Is, it's a true glow sight. <laughs> okay. Um, it has like uh, most sights have like the battery in it where like it glows and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I I'll show you then. But like it it you just it's really light then brighter than bright the brightest okay i'm you know it does it does question it like why do you have these on here when you have a certain time that you can't shoot anymore yeah like why have them on there like i have questioned that like i have never used it before like how much of a difference does it actually make have you tested like shooting in the back it's it's bright does it make that big of a difference like Like, if you shoot something at 30 yards does it really make that much of a difference there goes all of the arrows (laughs) Oh, yeah, here we go. It's uh, it's pretty bright. So, yeah. we'll see if I'm gonna look right into it. Do you see it? Yeah, I see a light there. Yeah. Yeah. A little. So that's that's off right there. Right. Right. Eventually, no. There's a light. Nope. Went away. There it is. That's the brightest it goes right there. Interesting. Lighter. Yeah. Light. So if you go this way. Okay. That's the lightest it goes. You can barely see that. Yeah. Okay. Then you go up a little bit more. So that makes yeah, I can see that for sure. And then it's super bright. Then it's off. Huh. So okay. I'm like, it does make a difference. Like I will say that. You can see it a lot. Like if it's pitch black, like if we made it pitch black in here, I'd be able to see those lights. Like I'd be able to yeah. see those pins, but just because it's, it's an actual light shining on it. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and in the daylight, like I didn't realize this, but on the back of it. You have a little tape that actually glows. So, like, if you're in all, if you're sitting in the sun, mm-hmm. it's hitting that. That that tape on the back there is going to glow when it gets dark out. So, like, you're you mm-hmm. have all these lights to like see everything. It's like, why? <laughs> like, yeah, you can't shoot anything. Yeah. Anyway, at that moment, so uh, whatever. Um, okay. but yeah, so <laughs> like, fair. I'm I'm staying in there from getting in there. Like half an hour is, is good. Half yeah. an hour before before um, is good. I like to try and get there at least an hour before. Like for me mm-hmm. personally, like I'm I'm the type of guy that likes to get in there, get set up, and be sitting in my tree for like an hour before it gets light out. Because like sometimes maybe you beat that deer back to or on its way back to bed. You know, like yeah, that that's my mindset going on that. Like and then leaving after dark, I like to leave after dark just because. If a deer is leaving its bed to feed, maybe it already passes me. And then it, I can still use that tree again by leaving that stuff up there mm-hmm. and just set, just getting down quietly, all that kind of stuff, and come back in the next day and mm-hmm. set up in the same spot. So, like, that's kind of my, my mindset on it. Like, But, like, yeah, I'm waking up. I mean, at my cabin, I'd wake up, like, 3 a.m. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, you're walking yeah. several miles back. Yeah, I know you would just be like, all right, it's two in the morning. I'm up and I'm I'm leave. You're leaving the cabin at like three. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's going to take you two hours to get back. Right. So like, it, it it all depends on where I'm going. Like, if I'm going around here, mm-hmm. I could like if I go ag around here, right? right? I could wake up an hour before or two hours before sun and get to my stand still an hour before, yeah. or forty minutes before. But like my new spot I'm going to, it's like I have to get in there. And put some miles on before I even get close to the tree that I want to hunt. So, I mean, I like that though. I like that ex- exploring aspect of things. Mm-hmm. Um, what so, do you, yeah. So, you like to sit till dark. Mm-hmm. What are you doing in this? Sit? Let's just say you target. Okay. Shows up after shooting. You mean like, big boy? Yeah, well, so we'll, we'll just say big boy. Well, okay. we're we're speaking right. Let's just say you're hunting <laughs> right in this scenario that I'm creating. Well, he's already down at this point where okay, this podcast true. comes That's out. True. Okay, so this is next year. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> when you have a different big boy. Okay. And say you're hunting the rut. Uh huh. And a buck comes in that you mm-hmm. will gladly shoot, but it's past shooting light. You can't shoot him, mm-hmm. whatever, and he won't leave. And you have to go. Oh, that's easy. What do you? How do you? Coyote? How? That's how you go through that situation. <laughs> and he's gone. Absolutely fucking lootly he's okay. gone. And then now, well, here's the question. Or I'll throw a ra- an acorn at him. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Get the... <laughs> Leave. 
Because like, I don't want to make any noise, nothing like that. I was going to say, but are you hunting that same spot then the next day? Or it, did you think the coyote, regardless if it was you or the quote unquote coyote howl, scared him off? So I, I never had it happen, so I wouldn't really know what to do. But I mean, I've yeah. seen it happen. Be, like people use that technique before and they, they come back to the same area again. Yeah. Coyotes aren't like an odd thing to for deer to see in the woods so like i don't think it would spook them too bad i just think they would run off just because oh that was really that was loud near me close that was really close so i mean i think that would kind of spook them enough to get them out of there um but it, it would it would all depend man because like where he's heading like okay so say he came from a direction and i know what's in the direction that he's heading in and i'm like okay that's probably his bed that he's heading to Mm -hmm. or like a food source or water or something like a creek crossing scrape whatever i would maybe keep my things there for the morning get in there in the morning yeah and then if i don't see anything move like go scout a little bit and see what's going on like see if he went to a doe bedding area like just walk the way he walked and see what's on the map and all that kind of stuff so i think yeah, coyote howl would be 100% what I'd be doing. Yeah. Um, now, how questionable to dark would it be? Like, are we talking way past legal light? Are we talking yeah, like, like you a can't... minute before legal light? We're talking like you know he's there. Yeah. You've seen it. Like, let's say you saw him walking in at 100 mm-hmm. yards. Okay. And by okay. the time he's within 30, you can't really, you can just see movement. So, so you know he's there, but you cannot get a shot off to say, like, legally or ethically yeah, or anything. Right. You can't get a shot off. So, but he's still there. That would change. I think if I if I saw him off on 100 yards, mm-hmm. I think I would change that up a little bit. I wouldn't wait till he came anywhere close to me. I would I would howl because, like, if I know it's, like, a minute to dark and he's 100 yards away, I know he can't cover that distance in a minute unless yeah. he comes he's at running. a dead sprint. <laughs> yeah. And either way, I'm not going to be shooting him at that moment. No. So, like, if I see him 100 yards away, I... I'm 100% doing coyote howl then Mm -hmm. because that might push him back the direction he comes, which would actually benefit me in that sense because then he might go back to where he was better before. Yeah. Right? Or feeding before or whatever. And that way in the morning, maybe I can sneak in there and get that set up and then he would come by again. Or would you move your stand the 100 yards to where he was where you saw him a minute before? No. See, that's that's almost like – it would depend. Like, if, if it's a heavy trail that he was on, mm-hmm. then yes. Okay. But if it was just, like, a random spot, like, if I knew I was already set up on this heavy trail, yeah, I'm not going to move from that heavy trail because I knew he was coming to that. Right. So, I don't think I would move unless there was some kind of hot sign, or like, say, community scrape or something like that. Like, yeah. then I'd be like, okay, I want to set up between, I want to split the distance then. So, if he's 100 yards away mm-hmm. and I'm on a main trail that's 20 yards in front of me, so really, in retrospect, that's that trail is then 80 yards from where he was. Mm-hmm. I'm going to split that 40 and 40. So that way I have a shot to that trail and then a shot to that primary scrape that he's possibly hitting. If yeah. it's there, that's just how my brain works. But it's like, you know, if I can split the distance, yeah, that'd be smart. Give you, a, even if it's an extra minute of daylight. Yes. Get you that better opportunity. If I can see him a minute before last legal light at 40 yards and I know I have a clean shot, you know, I'm taking that you shot. Bet. Yes. <laughs> Better take that shot. <laughs> I, I don't care if I had to search all night for that deer. I'm taking that shot. Oh, yeah. You, you say, you give some people a call. I'm like, get the spotlights. We're going searching for a well, dead that's deer. A thing. That's the thing for our deer camp. You know, we don't have service. So it's like. Depending on where you're at, yeah. Right. So we'll dive into that then. But yeah. we'll, we'll dive into that. Um, so that's kind of my opening morning or mm-hmm. run morning yeah. as well. Like coffee, possibly go to the bathroom, take a dump. Yeah, always all make that sure kind you of do stuff. that. You know, that's and important. Then really try and push it out. Like I'm not, dude. There's there's times where it's just like, I don't really have to go. Yeah, but yeah. you bet I'm sitting on that toilet oh, for at least 20 minutes to make at least, sure. <laughs> at least because <laughs> once in a while you have like, uh, we don't have to go into detail yeah, about that, it. That's fine. <laughs> so, um, a big thing during the rut, it's debatable. Really, people calling during the rut. Mm-hmm. You know, like, or would you be calling at all during the rut time frame? This time frame of October 28th to like let's say November 7th. Um, if I knew the area where I was hunting, yes. Yeah. Um, and again, this is, this is different for everyone depending mm-hmm. on where you hunt. Cause I know where I hunt or have hunted. It's that November 7th through the 14th mm-hmm. seems to be the most activity that right. I have seen. Mm-hmm. Um, I've tried it last year 
calling with the grunt tube, and okay. I used the old, uh, the green, the Primos, the can. Mm-hmm. The good old can. But, that was um, a better way to do that? To tell, or show. You have to go, you have to blow in the hole. Oh, that sounds better. Oh, yeah, it's that more realistic. Better. I like that. And then you have the small one, so yeah, it's... For all the listeners out there, this is the can, the Asterisk Bleat, the original, the OG. It's a bigger can, and then I have the uh, the little can, Doe Bleats. It goes like... A little and softer. There's a few ways, obviously, you do it. You can put your, whole, your thumb over the hole. See, it's, it's harder with a little one. Yeah. Because it, it almost leads down there all the way, but the big one, you can kind of play with it a little bit. You can kind of play with it a little bit, but... Blowing on it too works. Yeah. But I did that last year a little bit, and I don't think there was a, clearly any deer in the area that mm-hmm. was interested or whatever, because that was when I had that counter with the buck mm-hmm. walking right underneath the mm-hmm. stand. Mm-hmm. So I hunted that same spot for the next two days. Yeah. Thinking, okay, maybe, because I had a couple on camera prior to that, mm-hmm. something, okay, maybe they are cruising through this area. They might still be in the vicinity. Yep. Let me try some calls, and, and it... I mean, nothing came around anyway, so that didn't work. But I just, I don't know. So it probably could work because I've had only one encounter with a chasing buck. Okay. One encounter. Okay. I don't know if I ever told you that. No. I don't know. This was. Let's break the, let's, let's hear the story. And it wasn't, I wasn't deer hunting. Mm. Should have been. Should have been. But Sounds it like it. This was, oh, when was, oh, this was the year that you shot the nine point. Mm-hmm. Up at our up at my cabin. Okay. Um, it was November, early November, and we weren't. Yeah, me and Dad were not even. I had the crossbows. I think we brought. Um, I don't even know. If, I don't think Dad was in our tree yet at mm-hmm. that point at no, all. No, he wasn't. But I did bring it. But I remember I said, Dad, I want to go check the cameras the whole way up top. Mm-hmm. So let's just take the. We were, we were going to just take the shotguns for a walk because I was like, I really didn't want to carry the crossbow up. It's just no. I was like, I'd rather take the shotgun for a walk. So is there, like, the weight? Like, you made it sound like the weight was why you didn't want to take the crossbow. But really, the shotgun and the crossbow... It's easier to carry. ...weigh about the same. It's easier to carry a okay. shotgun. Because I right. can throw it over my shoulder. I When I have the crossbow cocked, mm-hmm. I'm always nervous to have it on my back mm-hmm. or have it because mm-hmm. if I'm like, I feel like if I bump the strings... Like it's just going to like blow up yeah. or something, or it's going to go off, okay. and something's going to happen. Right. Like, I don't know. It's just reasonable, like, irrational, reasonable. F- yeah, a reasonable but irrational fear of mine. That's a, that that is an issue with crossbows. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean I take care of it. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, yeah. I mean, you don't want to see me walking around in the woods with like my bow like drawn back the whole yeah, time, just chilling as I'm just like walking through the woods, like you know. Yeah, or like you imagine like having it pulled back, lock yeah. it in place, and trying to throw it on your back. Yeah, that'd be see that actually see, that's painful. where that yeah it, yeah so I yeah. don't didn't want to deal with that okay All right. and I knew Reasonable. you know that mountain Reasonable. it's just yep Reasonable. So I was like yeah shotgun cool mm-hmm. um we were in the valley mm-hmm. and this doe comes charging out of the woods not even twenty yards behind there's a buck okay I th- it might have been it wasn't a big one okay. Um, it might, if it was legal, it was a nice little six point. Yeah. If it was legal. Okay. I really couldn't pin on the antlers. That's how, mm-hmm. I don't want to say it was small, but that's how not, Bare, not Maybe big. a barely legal Maybe buck. a barely legal. Yeah. But he was chasing, head down, ready to go. And I was like, me and my dad just stopped. Mm-hmm. Like, we're just out in the open. They didn't give two shits about us. Yeah. They're, they went down and she made a 180, came right back up and he just you know, followed her. Right on the trail. And we were... Oh, save that. Wowzers. Jeez. That's... Losing everything. There we go. And we were... It was crossbow range. Okay. We, they were within 40 yards. Okay. Within. So if I had... If it was a miracle that I stopped him, mm-hmm. I could have shot him. Okay. But he was... I mean, he was tailing her. Yeah. Like his nose was up her ass, essentially, yeah. and as she was running away. What was away. the distance like between them? Oh. Do you remember? He was less than twenty yards away. From oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. He was okay. chasing Jason, yeah. and he was just like, "Let's go, let's head, go." Head turned down like full sneak, kind of. Oh, he was. After. Oh, he was full sneak. Full sneak. He was full sneak. I was like, I was like, "Oh my god!" And then they went up in the woods, and then never saw him again. Yeah, never saw him again. I was like, oh, "Loud." Shit. Was it loud? I heard like some like, uh, you knew they were coming. Yeah, you yeah, definitely knew they yeah. were coming. I heard like a like a little 
grunts kind of out mm. of him, just mm-hmm. like meh, meh. tendon grunts kind of. Yeah, like yeah, get chasing. like get yeah. the hell back here kind yeah. of deal. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. And I looked at Dad, and he's like, well, that was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were gone, and that yeah. was so that was like the first and only encounter that I've had with chasing. Okay, buck. Okay, you know, during the run, and that yeah. was that beginning first week week and a half of november okay all right so that october 28th to fourth time frame yeah yeah okay all right so i was like i'd like to see that again yeah uh because i've had that i've had the bedded up Mm -hmm. by your road the buck and the doe Mm -hmm. and then that one buck last year last year last year that i yeah. encountered with that yep. he wasn't chasing enough but he was just like walking like i don't care i'm Out just pace I'm, I'm moving yeah when he's that when he's that big of a buck that you explain i mean he's not gonna really he's gonna save his especially in those woods like he's gonna and he's gonna take the easiest route too like he's gonna oh yeah he's gonna know those mountains he's gonna take the easiest route like he's gonna yep especially when they're cruising bucks like we'll get into that then because i want to maybe we'll touch on that like when we figure mm-hmm. out where we're gonna be sitting yeah like ideas anyway of where we're yeah. at. um so no real calling, no not not too much, not too much. Just let it happen, kind of. Yeah, I just I don't know, man. I just for, I know it works because we had uh, Derek on Derek the Nace. Derek yep. Nace on the podcast, and yep. he calls all the time, and he's had mm-hmm. quite a lot of success a with lot. it. So it's like because you don't think of Pennsylvania and calling, you right. think of Midwest, no yep, and calling. But clearly, Derek is uh, say hey, it works, you know, yeah. and he is proof. That yes. it works? Yeah. I think if you do it right. Yeah. So who knows if I'm even doing it right? I don't think I don't anyone does A it. lot of people are doing it right, to put yeah. it that way. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing it right, so don't even say yeah. that I'm doing it wrong, because I know I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. I just... It's, yeah. Just, it's something I'm learning, you know? I don't think... Unless I'm getting... Let's just say, like, I'm getting pictures of them on camera and i'm like okay they look like they're chasing mm-hmm. around this time frame and i'm in this in the area during that time frame mm-hmm. i might try calling okay but i don't think i'm really even going to bother bringing any any yeah. tubes or even the can into the woods this year i just don't yeah. just find some sign set over it mm-hmm. see who see who comes through yeah um for for me for calling uh calling wise it's i'm gonna be like I would say before the rut is when I'll do most of my calling, mm-hmm. like rattling, all that kind of stuff. Like now, I will say that in the area that I want to set up, because stand placement is after this, so yeah. right after this, we're calling stand placement, where I want to set up on in the bottoms of the big woods, it's kind of like a perfect like rattling sequence area because like it's it's going to echo, it's going to carry up the mountains when you're yeah. when you're rattling at these bottoms. So like. Calling and rattling when in the evening time frame, I feel like might be a better option than like say morning time frame. You know, like I've always done research, but like when when's the best time to call and all that kind of stuff. Like the most stuff that I've seen and encountered a little bit because the the buck I got the the eight point I mm-hmm. got, um, yeah, the eight yeah. point I got, I called him in. I snort wheezed him in, snort right. wheezed and grunted him in, and. That was kind of a cloudier day, but then once he went down, it was sunnier. So, like, mm-hmm. on cloudier situations, they say to, to call and do rattling and do all that kind of stuff because you're going to find more of a uh, response to that stuff than if you do it, like, on a sunny day or yeah. midday or whatever. Like, And don't be afraid to call either, I think. Like, it's, it's you know, you're out there having fun. Like, deer communicate on a daily basis. Like, they don't just, like, stay quiet the whole time. Like, they do make noises. Yeah. Like to do like the little grunts that go, yeah. like they they make those communication grunts and all that kind of stuff like communication bleats and you know all that kind of stuff like they communicate a lot. Just we don't in the big woods, you don't hear it often because like there's the deer numbers aren't as fast or yeah. the deer numbers aren't as big as down here in ag country. Right, and they don't do down here in ag country as much because there's so many deer. They don't need to communicate because yeah. they just know where everyone's at. Yes. So, Big Woods, I probably will. I'll be taking my grunt tube. I actually got, uh, last year, I got, gosh dang it. There we go. There we go. I got the uh, the Ninja um, Intimidator grunt tube and uh, and snort wheeze. So, I like it because you can actually like, stretch it out. Mm-hmm. So, you can... So you can do that, and then you go. 
So like when I grunted the eight point in, um, the only reason I grunted was because in my mind I thought it would work one. Yep. And because I saw a bunch of fresh rubs on little saplings that were like the size of my thumb, like really fresh on my walk in. So like what I did was I went, I did, what did I do? I always get confused. I don't know if I did snort wheezes or grunts first. No, I did. I did two grunts and then I did a snort wheeze. So again, if this won't work. Nope, that one will not work. Oh no. That's why I had to buy a new one. Yep. So I did that, yeah. and that's when he came down the mountain. Now, that's what I think brought him in. Don't know if it did or not, but yeah. I'm saying that did. And then another thing, actually, that Derek Nace told me to do is get a fawn bleat. Ooh. So it's not, and yes, Remy did chew this. I was going to um, say, was that you? or No, that was Remy. <laughs> <laughs> God, <laughs> so I just bought this at Kinsey's. It was literally the last one. It's a Primo's Hardwood Fawn Bleat. Um, now he said it's better probably for early season. Like mm-hmm. if you're may, maybe that 28th to November 1st time frame, it still might work depending yeah. on the area you're in, but I'm going to be using this early season and it's, it's, uh, more of a, you know, doe in the er, doe and buck in the early season still like to get together. They still like to spend time together, all that kind of stuff. They feed together quite often. Right. They're not trying to stay separate until that, the, First doe comes in he- in heat in that area, then you'll see bucks start fighting with each other. Yeah, to you know get that doe. Um, so I bought this, and it sounds like a little bit like this. I don't know which side to blow in, to be honest with you, but I'm blowing in the the wood side. So if it's wrong, it's wrong. I don't know. So that's what it sounds like. Sounds um, about right. But it's just a thing, like, it's it just lets other deer know, like, hey, there's deer in this area. It's okay to go out there. Kind of like it's a, almost like when you see a deer and they wag their tail a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's saying, okay, it's okay to, for everyone to come out. Like, if you yeah. see a deer look back, wag its tail, you know there's more deer coming. Yep. So, like, keep that eye out, too, when you're in the woods. Yeah. Um, rattling, Derek does it in the early season. I, I might try it in the early season once in a while. Like, if I see, if I see a buck off the distance, he looks like he's pissed off. Or something like that. Like he looks like he could fight. Yep. I will rattle because I think it brings in more dominant buck. It, it whatever, it could. I don't know. Um, but I'm probably gonna use my black rack for that, which I th- hope is in the back of my truck and not <laughs> thrown out somewhere. But this Maybe Remy got that one too. <laughs> no, he did not. Get that one. <laughs> His bone is right there. That one up there. Yep. But this is actually um, a deer that was hit, um, which was a beautiful deer. Um. So he was like this right here. I mean, he was he was a nice he was a oh, nice buck. Yeah, yeah, I he was remember very that nice one. Buck. Um, but he was hit right along the side of the road um, when I was coming home from FedEx one night. So I will call depending. Like if I see one off in the distance, I'll probably call. Like if he looks like he would come in, test yeah. it out a little bit with a little bleat maybe mm-hmm. here and there, and go from there. See if he'll respond to a bleat first, especially if he's running. I'll, I'll definitely try and grunt on him then. Or if mm-hmm. I see him off in the distance, I'll grunt on him a little bit. Just, you know, play around with it. I think the the main thing that I'm going into this season in general is just, like, having more fun and just enjoying mm-hmm. the time out there more than just, like, being, like, more stressed out and, like, be like, okay, I got to go out. I got to do this. You know, right. like, I want to enjoy it. So, like, if I, if I call and it fucks up my hunt, fucks up my hunt. You know, there's mm-hmm. other deer in the woods. Yep. Just like there's other fish in the sea. Fucker. Yeah. Well, plenty of fish. <laughs> Plenty of fish. Oh, God. What a terrible dating site. <laughs> Plenty of fish. Oh, God. That was a terrible dating site. Uh, All right, I so don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> Happily married. Thank Preach. you. Preach, brother. Preach. Thank you. Um, so stand placement now. Yes. So hmm. for, for evenings, I'm definitely hunting down low. Okay. Like I'm hunting down low in those drainages, finding a, a scrape and a trail and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then evenings, I mean mornings, um, yeah. I, see, I don't know. Cause like mornings Same. I'm like, I want to hunt like up high, but yet I know if I hunt up high, I could be passing stuff on the way up and bumping them out. So it's like, mm-hmm. what do I do? I do, I wait till that first light and then start walking in and wait to see what I find. Like right. maybe start walking in for where I want to go. Like, so I'm, I'm the first day I'm going up. We'll we'll dive into this now because like I think is a good so November seventh yep. after I drop my daughter off at daycare, 
I'm heading up. Right. So I I'm going right to my old cabin. Yes. I'm going right there and I'm I'm hunting up there. So like you told me that, yeah. I'm walking back into here because I have never hunted the bottom before and there's all these scrapes and I checked these scrapes and it was November I think it was let's see when I found them. November twentieth is when all these scrapes were hot. So you would think at some point in early November this area would also be heating up. Like you would yeah. find those does on the bottom, you'd find them bedding, you find them feeding, and then you had those mature buck cruising trying to find that first doe that hits. Right. So like I'm thinking that evening time frame, like you have all these thermals right here on the side of henlocks, you have hemlocks right here. I've seen, you know, they have this cover right here. You have food up top. Like there's going to be something cruising. There was a, my last time in there, I found a monster scrape right here. And it, oh wait, that was that's not the one. It's at the bottom here. This scrape right here was absolutely insanely big. Oh yeah. Like yeah. look at, look at how big that Looking branches and that scrape. That was at the very bottom of the hill. I mean, look at those leaves coming. Right. The, like there is inches right. of leaves. And that's so, bare ground. Right. And this was like, so the cool thing about this was, so like you hear about benches, right? Everyone talks about benches. Like this mm-hmm. is on the very bottom of this mountain right here. With the, the thing I look at now, I didn't realize back then, put it that way. So like there's a bench right here like it doesn't you don't see topo lines right by this scrape Mm. right here but yet when you're there it looks like an old logging trail and then it like drops down like this and then it's flat again so like you don't see that on here but it's something that they would travel and then right back into here it's thick thermal areas like pines and stuff like that like water and all these scrapes are so i'm like Man, like that, and I found a bed back in here. But I think the coolest part in looking at this now, you have these two drainages coming down right here, and you have this this little knob going up between it. Mm-hmm. And that's I had a camera hanging there, and I've got some. I don't know if it's even going to show up anymore. It might not even show up, but I I know. Uh, I don't know if it will or not. Probably not. No nope. pictures. Nope. But I had some really nice buck coming literally right down this knob. Yeah. And that would be pretty much directly in line with the scrape. And then I found a big bed right here, found a scrape over here then too. Like the bases of these mountains were hammered with scrapes. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I never hunted it. I never, I, I automatically just always would walk up here and hunt this top part right here where I found that one tree that had five scrapes underneath it. Yep. And then you had scrapes over here and all that kind of stuff. But like this spot right here, 100% would be a great evening spot. Because you'd have all these, you'd have everything falling. Like you'd have this water pulling your thermals down. So you get in a tree, doesn't matter if those thermals are rising. You you should pay attention to the wind. Don't get me wrong. Yes. But with Scent Thief, it doesn't really matter that as much. Put that way. So I can go in here if it's the wrong wind. I don't know where they're betting at. That's the thing. Yeah. I don't know where they're betting. So, like, I could go in there on what I think is the right wind, mm-hmm. but it's not the right wind. Yeah. So, like, I, it doesn't. I, it's not going to matter, right? So, like, my idea is probably to – I'm going to try and cross this creek right here. The creek is always a bitch to cross, put it yeah, that way. I know you've always in complained general. about that creek. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a bitch. But, like, I just – and – so I'm going back in here. I'm hunting probably that scrape. Going to probably hunt. I'm going to probably go up this hill just a little bit so I can kind of look down this scrape and maybe see up above me just a little bit. Yeah. And maybe see down here a little bit. So like I want to hunt because I know over here, right by this, uh, before this drainage right here, it opens up quite a bit. So like if I can somehow get over here and still see that scrape and the trail coming this way, like I don't have to be right on the scrape. I can, as long as I see the scrape and I can see the trail that they're using because it's the first day up there. It's the first evening. My truck's not even going to be unloaded yet. Like it's, it's going to be, everything's going to be in my truck. And I'm just like, man, if, if I can somehow get back here, find a good spot, if I can glass and see stuff off in the distance, I'm like, okay, that's where they're crossing at. That's where Mm -hmm. all the actions happen at. I know that for the next day, but like the thing with the rut is like it changes. So like I could see it the seventh. 
go back in there the eighth, and it's you don't see a it's, thing. It's another. It's a fucking mile back this way, like or a mile yeah. that way or whatever. Like, yep. That's the thing about the big ones, but like, I think the best thing about this is like the experience, right? Mm-hmm. Like, this is not a one year thing. This is like a yearly thing that we want to do. Absolutely. So like, it's not just. We might not go to your cabin all the time. We might eventually, we might camp at one of these campsites back in here, right? Like, we might do that. We might, because there was a camp, that camp, one camp is right here. Like, it's right around in here. That, yeah. That camp was set up. So, like, we could honestly camp right there. Now, we may bust everything out by having a fire right there yeah. or whatever. But, like, it's about the experiences and it's about, like, just having fun back in here. And just exploring. Like, if I don't see anything that evening, I'm probably still going to come back here and, like, try and scout a little bit more. Yeah, especially if and, you find fresh. If you find yeah. fresh sign, I right. would definitely want to go back. Yeah, even if I see a doe. If I see a doe in this area, I'm going back. Yeah. Because that doe could pop any second. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, that's my plan. Then also with – so, Ed, possibly from Our Grounds Coffee Company, is coming up. And okay. Drew, mm-hmm. right? So I told Drew, I was like, how long is it going to take you to get this, this spot? I sent him a waypoint. I was like, when we park here, how long is it going to take you to get to there from Ohio? Yeah. Like five hours. I was like, cool. Can you meet me there by 1230? <laughs> yep. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I can do that. So I'm going to have, I'm going to set up here. I don't, I would love to have him set up somewhere back in here. Like this, this is a big flat right here. Yeah. With this drainage coming down right to here, I would prefer him to sit up back in here but i know there's a nice bed right there so maybe if like if he would set up down here a little bit or whatever like but these these scrapes are hot all the time like they're always it's almost like when i was scouting him, i was like one step behind this the deer that was ever whatever doing it because it was like it was yep. so fresh when i was seeing him it was yeah. so fresh so he just missed it like yeah. he could be 200 yards that way you don't even know it's yep. like oh shit i was 10 minutes too late exactly. or something like that close. Exactly. So like evening time frame, um, I'm going to be hunting low. Morning time frame, if I can, I'm probably going to be hunting high wherever I hunt, you know? Yeah. Like hunt the the top third or top near food, bedding, like be downwind of bedding pretty much is what I'm going to mm-hmm. try and do. And I know where some bedding areas are in here. It's just hit or miss, right? Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to do either the full saddle setup or I'm going to do the retrograde with the mesh con seat on top of it. A little so it's hybrid. A little more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be going up early because it's, you guys are coming up the 7th through yep. the 11th. Yep. So Thursday to Sunday. I plan on going up if I can Sunday. Yeah. Prior. Mm hmm. Um, and I have, because I didn't get a chance to do any really, uh, no scouting. Yeah. This whole week. I was like, it was more of a work week anyway. Mm-hmm. But those couple days, I'm, I'm going up because there's a lot of spots. I have essentially my starting point. Yeah. I have that. Yep. I know the buck go there. They have done it for the last couple years, but they're not there during the day. Yep. So now I just need to go out Mm -hmm. and figure out where they are during the day, and that'll be when I go up to scout. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's it's, What Ethan is talking about is he has nighttime pictures. Of nice buck. Of nice buck. During the rut time. During the rut. It's like 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night sometimes. Between 8, 8 and 9 o'clock at yeah, night. Yeah, so, so I'm not that far off, depending yeah. on how fast they're moving. Right, right. It's just, I'm, I'm just not in the right spot right now. I, I think they're, like we talked about before, I think they're moving to the next bedding areas. They're just following drainages down, hitting drainages, getting all the scent, because that evening time frame, everything's falling. So they're, they're mm-hmm. 100% doing that. Yeah. Now, if you want to... You know, obviously, get them before they get to this spot. I got to go over there somewhere. You got to go over here somewhere. And I think the top of this drainage right here would be a good start to spot. To to start is right there, yep. probably to get in there. Because um, every every rub, yep, is going. Looking at the map from here, every rub is going this way. Right. So they're so they're coming from over there, or they're coming from down. Yeah. And Jay hooking over. I think I think if you get, I have clear cuts turned off on here, but it's okay. I don't really turn. I know on, there's turn there's on one in the see the, one, see the road. Yep, there's one right They're here. They're all right there, and then there's I don't know if there's one in. Well, that, I okay. don't think there's one in that area, but there's yep. one up there for sure, and it is just stupid thick in there. And they have these trails right here too. Yeah, get, I don't know if they're human trails. 
Probably they do a lot of trails, a lot of logging up there. So like you have multiple spots you should start, and I think, I think a good spot to start is just maybe, maybe park somewhere up here, or somewhere close to here, and just walk this ridge out, Mm -hmm. and just walk across this knob right here and back to this spot. Because I think that'll be your best bet is like maybe if you can park at this spot right here, this pull off right here. That I can't that? do because that's gated off. So where the intersection is? Yes. That's that's like the – that is like basically the parking lot. Okay. You can't go – you can't drive yep. left okay. or up in this picture or okay. down. Okay. You can only you guys, drive this way. You can only drive this way? Yes. You can. So I can drive oh, down yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you're so that's good no then. big deal. So if you, would, if you would go up here and park maybe right here, walk this trail in, mm-hmm. and then – or even go up the whole way up here and walk it down. And then when you walk on the way back, just get on this road and just walk it back this way. Yep. You can make literally one big loop and just get back in your car or have your dad park right here, whatever, and then just go from there. I think I think your best bet's gonna be this knob right here, this drainage right here, the top of this drainage right here. Yep. Or right here. Yeah. I think I think one of those spots, if you set up like depending where the thermals are, I think they might bed on this hill right here, a buck. When they're bedded down yeah. during the rut, you know, not quite often. Um, but yeah, I think I think if you set up, find something in this area. If you find a good sign in that area, or find a good sign in this area right here, I think that's going to be your best bet. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, hundred percent. That's what I'll I'll probably spend the next first couple of days like I'm. I'll try to make it real easy on myself. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll I'll have my backpack. So I'll, I'll have water and you know some food because I want to do a lot of scouting. I'll pro- mm-hmm. I will take the crossbow with me. Oh yeah, I would because hope so, like yeah. it'd be kind of stupid not to. Because yes. knowing my luck, I get an opportunity and yeah. just like oh I'm just scouting. I don't have yeah. no like if I see it I'm gonna shoot the yes, thing right exactly. But I'm not. I don't during those first couple of days of scouting. I'm probably not gonna bring my the cold world. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. bring that. That the, first the only, couple days. The only, I would say at least the first day, don't. Just put boot miles on the first day. Yeah. And then that second day, because if you find something good that first day, you, like, you want to take it in with you at least. You want to take it at least having your car ready. So, like, say, like, mm-hmm. you get down this, if you are if you walk the whole way out here and you hit this drainage, you're like, oh, my God, this is, like, a sign I got to set up on. And it's like, okay, I'm going to make this loop right here, get back to this road, and go back down there. Get that cold world. Yeah. Drive the car down here. Walk in. Be quiet about it. And set up and like, man, like set up for the evening. Yeah, I w- I would definitely do that. I mean, the only thing bad about hunting a top would be one, it's easy access for everyone else to also hunt, and then also it's the thermals in the evening are all falling. So like mm-hmm. that would be the biggest issue. Um, so that's why I would think maybe hunting down here in the evenings wouldn't be bad. Because you'd have you still have the thermals falling here, but yet it'd be moving really quick with this water going down. Yeah. So I think that would be another good option too, or even right here, because you have this drainage coming down and this drainage coming down right here. So that would be another another good option right there. Um, but yeah, so so that's the plan at least in the beginning. Because I'll yeah. be up, I think Dad and I will be up obviously before all you mm-hmm. guys come up and. I'll get some scouting in, get some different spots, mm-hmm. and then depending on who's up there, I can be mm-hmm. like, hey, let's go. I'll yep. sit here. You sit there. Yep. See what we see. Yep. Yep. Go from there. So stay in location. That's pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to yep. try and find the hottest sign and set up on there or find the, the doe bedding at least and set up on there. Or you might even hunt your own property, honestly. If yeah, because the buck come through, you know, I th- see, it's such a hard because I know dad – Dad's gonna hunt the property. Right, he's yeah. gonna be around that area. It's almost like you, you should just let. I mean, twenty acres. You don't. You can't really hunt to have two people on the twenty acres because it's like. It just it with where your cabin's at in the twenty acres. It's like mm-hmm. you should really only have one person hunting that. So pressure doesn't get too heavy on that yeah. property. So we'll see once we get more. Once we get by the time we get up there, we should have some buck pictures on camera. Mm-hmm. I'm just assuming. Right. At this point, because it's happened for how many years in a row, mm-hmm. like it's going to happen. They're just right. creatures that happen. It's just A, who is it going to be? Yep. And B, when? Yeah. Right? When's it? And the big difference now 
that I didn't have last year is I have a cell camera down on the power line, mm-hmm. which is where I had that encounter with the buck. Right. So I can be like, hey, Dad, I just got a picture yesterday or two days ago. And Dad has access to this too. Yeah. Um, there's a buck running through. Maybe you should set up between the roads. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should set up over here instead of up on the blind, mm-hmm. you know, where your blind is. Try to set up here. Yeah, set up on top of the hill there. Get my dad set up, you know, down there, and I'll Mm -hmm. just, I'll I'll go up here. Yeah. Because there's, I mean, I would like to know more about up in there. Well, you you have the perfect opportunity, man. Like, you have have a cabin up there. You have all the time in the world to go up there. Like, you have all the opportunities to to scout. To make it happen. Yep, to make it happen, Gavin. I Um, think I will. So, prep for all day sits. So, since we're, we we picked our spot, we did all that kind of stuff, like, Prepping for an all day hunt is is easier said than done. Put it that way. Like you yep. got to make sure you have the right food. Like I've when I go in, I always like I'm I'm like oh man, I just need all this protein stuff like mm-hmm. peanut butter and jelly, like peanuts, yep, chocolates, like all this stuff. Like and then I get to start eating that stuff. I'm like man, I need some freaking meat. Like I need meat. <laughs> I yeah, need meat. Like it's like. I think that's one thing is like you got to keep your energy up. You got to have plenty of water. Like this thing here, like. This this Camelback, and I probably would need more than that. Like oh, I, yeah. I, I have need... one of those um, little pouches that you yep. put in your back. I have one uh, of those. Yep. It's, it fits in the back my one backpack I have, mm-hmm. and there's a little hole in the top where you can put the straw, the mm-hmm. straw or whatever, and I have it up over. Yep. So I, I mean, I fill that thing yeah. up, and it's usually empty by the end of the day. <laughs> and for where we're hunting, like if we're hunting those bases in the evening, right? Like if you have a um, a life straw. Like I have, yep. You can drink out of those creeks. Like if you really need, it. like, say you get one down, you're mm-hmm. like, oh, man, I just I have no more water. Like I got to take something. this thing out like two miles now. Like, yep, I got to do something. Like have those life straws. It's not going to really add that much weight to your pack. Like, no, it's it's more beneficial to have that than not. Um, but yeah, like food is like a huge one to keep the protein up. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you have water back at your truck. For when you go back there. Yep. Because it should be cool enough during the day, during yeah. this time, so you can leave, you know, a water bottle or two in mm-hmm. there and not have to worry about it getting gross. And mm-hmm. I mean, regardless, if you're thirsty, you're going to drink it. Yes, But you exactly. don't have to worry about it getting warm. And yeah. It's just nothing worse than getting back to your vehicle and drinking just warm water. What, one thing that I always um, look forward to, like after, especially up here, is like, I know after a hunt, I'm going back to the cabin, there's going to be a warm meal, or I'm going to freaking Deb's. I have to yes. bleep that out. There you go. Going to the bar to eat. That's better. Um, going there to eat, and it's like, man, I just can't wait to eat. Like, just yeah. sh- just deep fried shit. Honestly, yes. Like, just can't yeah, wait. Yeah, we, we hunt for this food because we, we want to eat some natural, really yeah. good food, and then we eat garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, fantastic. Whoops. It's fantastic. Yeah, right? I mean, you got to balance it out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you can't eat sh- you can't eat healthy all the time. Like, I feel like people who eat healthy all the time, like, just don't have a happy yeah, life. unseasoned chicken and plain white rice. Like, yeah. you guys what's, are crazy. What's wrong with y'all? Yeah, something's wrong. So, um, mindset-wise, going into, like, an all-day hunt, like, what's kind of your mindset? Like, are you – I've also – I've recently had thoughts, like, okay, I'm going to take a notebook or I'm going to take a book in with me. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of like changed up, but I'm also, like, I'll just take a nap in the tree. Yeah. I have my phone. Yeah, like it's a but, it's a habit. I just yeah, I'll sit there and be like, okay, well, I got you know, I got a couple games I can play that don't require service, so mm-hmm. I'll play a couple games and I'm just just chilling, you know, yeah. whatever, and just I couldn't bring anything else in, like a book or a notepad yeah. or something, because then if you see some, you got to like put it away yeah. and then grab your bow. Yeah. I mean, you still got to put the phone away, but that's a lot easier. I f- I feel like this is where self filming is going to really benefit me because like yeah. okay, so if I have it down here, like I can. Practice filming something, moving it, like yeah, get some doing B-roll. interview. Yeah, B roll is great. Like, I think I think that's a benefit, a huge benefit of self filming is like it kind of gives you something to do. Gives you something to do. <laughs> yep. You know, like they say you should have the GoPro your second angle. Like I've heard, I've seen some people say that you should have your GoPro running the whole time. Mm-hmm. So like, if you are on your phone or if you fall asleep, like your GoPro is recording literally everything you do. Yeah. Especially, it's funny if like everyone says, "Oh, when you were asleep, a deer walked by." You'll know. <laughs> You'll actually know because you have the GoPro running, right? Yep. So I think I think that's going to really benefit me this year with the mental side of thing. Like mm-hmm. I get mentally drained because I'm sitting out there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm waiting for these deer to come by, or you know, yeah, something like that. Like I'm just waiting for something to happen. 
Yep. And I think mentally self filming will help me with that where I'm actually like mentally focused the whole time. Yeah. Like mentally focused during the rut is like hard to cuz it's you're waiting for that like Yeah. You're waiting for that 2 minute thing to happen. Yeah, cuz you can go one, two, three days in a row and mm-hmm. like you're just not either you don't see anything yep. or you see it out of range. Yes. So you move, but yep. then they it's, move again. Yeah. You know, even further. So it's just like you just got to constantly like, okay, I'm in the area. I'm in the right spot. Mm-hmm. Just got to pray that it happens. That's pray all you can spray, do. Pray and spray, right? Pray, pray and, and spray. spray. Yes. <laughs> spray and pray. Spray and pray. Because, <laughs> yeah, um, first thing that walks in, it's send it. We kind of went, we went over food. Um, mm-hmm. I would also recommend not just having water, but having like some kind, something that tastes like has a flavor to it. Like if, caffeine. Yeah, some kind of caffeine. I like, do, because I don't have a jet boil. I don't have any, like, so I'm not making coffee that'd be, in the that'd woods. Too, some people do. Hard. Yes, I know some people do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't do cold coffee. No, thank yeah. you. It's got to be hot. Hot Starbucks. or nothing. Yeah. Is there a Starbucks up by your cabin? No. Oh, Man. Let's only find one. God, <laughs> no. Um, I've been getting, because they have them at the sheets mm-hmm. on the way up. I mean, they probably have on all sheets. Yeah. It's a vitamin water, mm-hmm. but they have caffeine mm. in it. Okay. I always bring like two of them because it's not a lot of caffeine, but it's yep. something. Just a little bit. I'll drink, I'll bring the water. Yep. And then I'll have one in each, like the side pocket. I'll have one in each. So like midday, I'll drink one of those as like a little, little yeah. boost kind of deal because I'm like, I'm going to be here all day. Yeah. I need a little extra caffeine. It tastes good. It's something other than just water. I've been looking at, uh, they have coffee like um, pouches. So, like, mm-hmm. you can put it, like, in your lip like you would. You, was that the one you talked about before? I think, It was yeah. a, little, a couple years yeah, ago, Yeah, like, I think. coffee grinds or something like that. But, like, yeah, yeah. you can put them in your lip, like, it, and then it gives you that nicotine. It's like, that'd be kind of nice to have. Just a little, like, because you don't, yeah, because you get that midday slouch, really, oh, if you're God. not seeing anything. Ele- that 11 to 3. And you're just, like. Time frame is, like, <laughs> I'm, like, dozing off. And it's, like, I, I. I want to walk around, but it's like, I, I, no, I should yeah. not be walking around right now. Like, it could happen. Like, my mind is set. I was always like, wait another half an hour. Yeah. And then once See, it happens, now, then like, wait another half an hour. Yeah. So now, like, now when would you move? Because you said you want to hunt high, mm-hmm. typically in the mornings and low in the evenings. Would, when do you, because that would be like a, I would say like a fear of mine, like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll get down. But the second I start getting down, that's when something's going to come through. Yeah. I feel like the morning time frame is that perfect time frame. Like, I would say from, I would say from when you get in the woods to about 11, 11.30, mm-hmm. that's the perfect time frame to like scout. Like jump some doe, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Like don't like spook them where they run like a mile, but and like- They're snoring at you constantly. Yeah, like yeah. just spook them, hunt with the wind in your face so the wind's blowing at you and like you're not blowing your wind into a bedding area. But like that 11.30 time frame is like that perfect time frame. Okay, now I really got to focus on getting into a tree. Like mm-hmm. I found the doe, I bumped the doe, I found the bedding. These buck are still on the way, like because mm-hmm. here's the thing: buck know where the doe bed, right? So they right. don't know that they you bumped them out of there. So like, yeah. go around and bump those doe, and then you're already walking with the wind in your face. Mm-hmm. That's a perfect way to set up. Yeah, the right. Like buck will come through. Yeah, exactly. So like, you can set the up down wind of that doe bedding area, and you'll be fine because those doe will eventually come back there Mm -hmm. because does usually always bed in one of their bedding areas. Yeah. And bucks already know where those does bed. So they're going to come check it out. They're going to come through no matter what. If they're there or not, they're there to check it no matter what. Because I think, just thinking out loud here, Mm -hmm. if you jump the doe Mm -hmm. and the bucks in the area knows the doe are there, so if the buck comes and realizes, oh shit, where'd the doe go? Mm -hmm. He's going to come looking. Mm -hmm. So if you go in that area they'll be like oh where where my doe let's yep. go find him out so then yep. when he comes you're waiting for him yep and i would in theory another thing that i would i am thinking about is like i know where some of the access points are like the trails access into the these thick doe bedding areas mm-hmm. and i have a few cameras um back in 2021 of where these buck would go in right like multiple times to check this area so like the doe bedding's there. I know what trail they're going in. Like, find those trails that go into that doe bedding area and maybe set on them too, depending yeah. depending on the wind. Um, but, yeah, so that's – for all-day hunts, that's what I'd be doing. So, like, hunting till – scout hunt scouting till 1130 with a stand on my back mm-hmm. and then setting up for that evening for hunt. Because the, the evening hunt is, like, 
you can have success in the morning time frame, but actually you might have more success just walking around, like yeah, scouting and hunting. Um, especially if it's a like it's a new area that you haven't really hunted that much or scouted that much. Period. Yeah. Um, weather typically in November. Um, the last couple of years seems pretty warm. It was like we fifties, sixties. We had there was a cold front. Okay, I remember it because it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday because it was up for the whole week. That mm-hmm. was up from like the seventh f- through the twelfth. Okay. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. But I think that that's a br- give or take a day. Right. That's when we were up. Okay. And I remember it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday, a cold front came. I mean, it dropped like 15, 20 degrees okay. compared to the day before. And it wasn't even cold, cold. Yeah. But it was still a significant drop. So I was thinking, right. Here it is. Yep. Didn't see shit. But, and it was, I mean, it was 40s. Right. The whole week. Like it wasn't, you'd think like November, up north. It should be maybe upper thirties, upper thirties, midday, low 40s, yep. like. But I think it was like mid forties, yeah, for the majority of the time. Yeah, um, and then that one day it dropped to like thirty, and that's kind of like that time frame when it drops to that like big temperature drop like that. That's when you want to get on those like those big primary scrapes. I feel mm-hmm. like that's when you want to get on them because then that's when it's going to be like they're going to be fire. Yeah, you know, moving around a lot, find that like. All this whole thing is based around doe bedding. So, like, if you find doe bedding and it's cool, you know a lot more buck are going to be cruising by because it's going to be cool out, and they can actually put on more miles at that point. Yep. It's just it's just all about fucking doe, dude. Yep. And Literally, if you're I, multiple honestly, ways, I'm gonna I have a, still have trail cameras that I don't have out. Mm-hmm. When I go up for those couple of days in mm-hmm. November, I'm then my backpack's going to be food, water, and trail cameras. Yep, that's what I'm doing too. I, I've I'm setting some them cameras up. down here. I want to pull. And I have four cameras in there. I might get some more because I know some camera companies have deals closer to like the rut time frame. Mm-hmm. Might buy some cheaper cameras at that point. We do like cheaper cameras. I do like that cheap work. cameras. That work, yes. Yes. I um, think I'm leaning more toward I mean, I don't have much service. Yeah. I have one cell camera up. Yeah. I just called it Rub City. Yeah. That's just so I know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, actually, I got a picture of a doe today, which, which was Congrats. nice during the day. It was Congrats. nice. I was like, oh Congrats. shit, there's something here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm up there, just standard SD yeah, camera. Yeah, service and just is let shoddy. Them, let them soak. Yep. Let them and soak I'll, till next year. That's what I'm going to do. Yep. And if I don't, depending on how archery season goes, mm-hmm. going up for rifle season, mm-hmm. if I go up there, I might check the cameras in rifle well. season. Just be yep. like, yeah, what happened in the last, you know, month that I wasn't here? Mm-hmm. Yep. See who, yep. See who's here. Uh, so, and then here's, here's the questions. Oh, the two. Here, here are the questions. Here we go, which um, I don't, I don't know what these are. Doe. Doe during the rut. Would you shoot one, yes or no? If it's just walking through, yes. Okay. Send it. If it's running, yeah. like it looks like, I mean, mouth open, mm-hmm. tongue hanging out, no. Okay. Knowing what I know now. Right. I'm, I'm letting it run. Well, first, I don't think it's going to stop. Right. I'm letting it run by. Because I know a buck's coming. Yeah. But if it's just walking, and if it's it, it and I have the tag, mm-hmm. dead. So, Because yeah, I'm so not taking I, I'm, the chance. <laughs> I'm pretty much the same way. Like, mm-hmm. doe, I would say it would be a maybe. It wouldn't be a yes or no. It'd be mm-hmm. a hard maybe because, it's like, you know, if I have a buck, say I already feel my buck tag. Right. Right. And this time for, like, absolutely, I'm shooting a doe. Like, there's yeah. no doubt. I have no doubt in my mind that I'm going to shoot Yeah, why not? You're not going to shoot the buck anyway. Right. <laughs> so, that's where the maybe comes in. Like, if mm-hmm. I have a buck tag, mm-hmm. but I also, there's no other time I'm going to be up in 2G this year. So, like, would yeah. I shoot one? Yeah. yeah. But, like, if I, like, in your situation you just said where, like, if, it, if I see one sprinting by, no, I'm not shooting that. Mm-hmm. No, because, it's like, there's you probably know, there's something's on, coming. <laughs> there's something coming. Yep. And I got to get ready. Because that thing's not going to stop very easily. You'll be yelling at a thing just right. to get it to stop. Um, the no, the yes would be like if it's walking by, say it has a young one with it still, like it, I would 100% shoot that. Yeah. That older doe. Oh, yeah. Like I have no, whether if I filled a tag at that point or not, doesn't mm-hmm. for me, it doesn't matter. It's meat. It's yep. meat in the freezer. I'm happy to get a deer down. Yep. Any, absolutely. You know, any opportunity I can get, yep. send it. So public. Versus private. How are you hunting your private piece versus how would you hunt the public piece? So your private. Let's start with that. Um, 
Private would be because you have twenty one acres. Yeah. Um. I don't know because I just know like historically, not really going to see the buck during the day. Mm-hmm. You know, I might you might see a doe. Like mm-hmm. I, I had an encounter with a doe during rifle season last year, but she was a little thing. I couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't shoot her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that one buck, but. I don't know. Like I don't just set up somewhere. I don't, I don't think it matters. I feel like with your setups, from what you told me, it, you're mostly set up on trails. Yeah, that's, that's pretty really, much what you're doing. I mean, yeah, you. No matter where you set up, yeah, you could see enough yeah. to know. Like even if I'm on this trail and they walk somewhere else, yeah, I'll know it. Right. Because I'm like, no, oh, he's over there. No, no, as a move. Right. Um. Um. So that's really that's really it. And then that. and then for public, what would you be? What are you doing? So like we kind of already said what you're doing, but like so what I'm, are you what are you setting up on in public? Like what what see, kind of okay? So what am I because people this say year? hot sign? Yeah, but like what is your hot sign? See, here's the problem. My history with hot sh- hot shit hot sign has been if shit. You find hot shit, you better set up on that shit. Yeah, but it's <laughs> but it's been shit, right? Yeah, right? Because right. the hot sign I find rubs scrapes. Mm-hmm. They're all nighttime. Right. And I know they're fresh because I'm like, okay, this there's leaves everywhere. This mm-hmm. has been kicked out. These rubs are, I mean, there's still shavings on the ground. Like, I know this happened, but then I get pictures right. that tell me otherwise. Right. So, I feel like if I find some fresh sign elsewhere. Okay. Like, on a map leading to where I already know there's fresh sign. Okay. Then I'll set up basically over... I'll set up within range of it. If I find a trail yeah. and I find a fresh, say there's a fresh scrape with a licking branch mm-hmm. in an area that I've never been to and it mm-hmm. kind of is in line mm-hmm. of what I already know, Okay, I'll set up within range of that Okay, just to see. Yeah. Because I want to know like, okay, are they coming here at last light mm-hmm. before they go to over here or is this still a nighttime thing? Yep. Right? And then I can just kind of... I mean, I got time to play, mm-hmm. so I figured if I set, I'll say, all right, I'll set up here, and I go, okay, I got nothing. Okay, well, let's move a couple hundred yards this way, find right. some more sign if I do. Okay. Let's set up over here Yeah. and see if they come through and just kind of just break it down essentially yeah. at that point. But if if I find a scrape that's significant, I'm not, I'm talking like not a little thing, mm-hmm. like if I find a nice scrape, mm-hmm. I'm just going to set up on it. Just okay. why not, right? Yeah. It's just kind of mm-hmm. like why not at this point. Mm-hmm. I need to, just the experience of like, okay, here it is. Yep. Let's find out. Yep. You know, fuck around and find out, you know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> that's yeah. the way I, at least that's how I'm going to go into it this year. Yep. And then, like I said, I want to bring up a lot of trail cameras, mm-hmm. or at least what I have, mm-hmm. set them up, get that historical data, mm-hmm. so that next year I can go back in mm-hmm. and think, okay, this, I got this buck here, he's on this camera, he's on this camera, I found scrapes and signs, and mm-hmm. here's the trail, okay, let's try to... Now let's go in. Let's try to find some bedding. Yep. Let's try to find if there's any doe bedding. And then I can set up probably completely different next year. Oh, yeah. But this year is just going to be sign, get up a tree. Yep. See what happens. All right. And go from there. Okay. All right. And then if it walks by and it's got three points on the side, send it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So pretty much you guys already know what I'm doing for public because I don't have private, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, so, Ethan, what's your advice for for me and the listeners, Ooh. what would you give advice for me and the listeners um, going into the rut? Going into the rut, October twenty eighth to the to the seventh. Um, do not get discouraged if you don't see anything over fresh sign the first day. Okay, it's just they're everywhere, right? You don't know what they're gonna, where they're gonna be, what they're gonna do. Just keep moving. You see deer, go find them. Mm-hmm. Like, just like, oh, he was over 100 yards that way and I couldn't get him. Go set up over there somewhere. Okay. Go see what he's doing. All right. You just, you, don't be discouraged because I, I got that, like, I saw that nice buck, saw nothing the last two days. I was like, fuck this. Gave up. Yeah. I gave up when, yep. so I had fun, went small game hunting. Yeah. yeah. But I was like, nah, screw this, right? Yep. Nah, just go, go find him. Mm-hmm. Go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Try, just try something new. Yeah. Go in with low expectations. Always go in with low expectations mm-hmm. because then when you get something, it's even better. Oh, yeah. And then if you don't get something, it's like, eh, 
Yeah, you know. Yeah, I expected this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened. Got any advice for me? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Novice, Mr. Novice over here. I was waiting for you to ask me a question. Yeah, Um, go ahead. My advice to you, I know you want to scout, and for the listeners, really. Mm -hmm. Like, I know you want to, I know even me, but like, I don't have the time to go up there, put it that way. Mm -hmm. For if you have the time to go to a location, if you have the time to go out before the rut, that's the best time to scout. So like, instead of scouting that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and mm-hmm. finding the hot sign, you, what you should do if you're going up there before that, if you're going up there a couple of weeks before that, scout then. Like, so if you're going up there opening day, mm-hmm. scout then. Like, yeah. it's literally, just like don't even take the 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 cold world in with you. Just literally scout from morning to maybe three o'clock or two o'clock. Get back to your car. Go back to your private piece. Set up in your tree stand for an evening hunt and whack a doe. So like yeah. th- that would be the best thing. My best advice to you would be do that. So like this way you can already be ahead of the game. You can be like, okay. Yeah. And then you can think about when you get home, when you're, when you are able to look at your phone or all next, be like, okay, this is where I walk. This is the sign I found. I should probably set up right here. Yeah. You know, like that would be the best time instead of trying to chase the buck. Cause that's what you're doing. That's what we would be doing in the rut. Mm-hmm. Like you and I are both going to be doing that because like, I don't have the time to scout up there. So I don't have the new knowledge. Right. I have three years ago knowledge. I don't have this yeah, year. A lot knowledge. could change in those three right. years. Yeah. A lot could change. Access could change where I can't get the fuck back there. So True, like that Creek could really mess you up. My truck might not make it over. So like, then yeah. it's like, okay, well now my whole game plan changed, but like, yeah, that would be my advice to you and any listener. If you have access to get up there and scout, scout beforehand like if you because mm-hmm. if you you're okay with shooting a doe during that time frame and you shoot a buck beforehand you can still go hunt the areas that you scouted because most likely those areas are doe anyway yeah so you still can shoot a doe like yeah, it's fill the tag. i would do a lot of scouting or at least much as much scouting you can before going up there so then mm-hmm. maybe you can just go up there sunday instead of scouting all day you mm-hmm. can literally just take your time getting in there and hang that stand up. And yeah. then you can be like, okay, this is literally every day I go, as long as I'm seeing things and seeing, you know, stuff going on, this is where I'm coming every single day. So like you yeah. ha- you already know that yeah, right off the bat. So like, you know, you're going there. It's like, you can have everything set up, prepared. You just go from there. So that would be my biggest advice to you is like scout that opening weekend if you're going up. Yeah. Cause I already have a trail camera. Yep. Where my permanent stand is. Yep. So I'll go up. I'll be up at the cabin Friday. Mm-hmm. I'll just walk up, pull the SD card, mm-hmm. look at it. Be like, okay, a is there deer coming through? Mm-hmm. And if there is, which is a little concerning because a lot, I'm getting a lot of other pictures mm-hmm. as of late, mm-hmm. and I'm talking coyote, bear, mm-hmm. turkey. Mm-hmm. They're like the main three right now. Yeah. It's like where the hell did the deer go? But if I get deer consistently in the yeah. evening, say in the evening, mm-hmm. right? Then I'm like, okay, I'm good. So yep. that Saturday morning, I'll wake up, I'll drive up. Yep. And I'll just take take, take car off for a walk, mm-hmm. do some scouting, see some, shoot yep. it. And then if they're even coming onto the property, then mm-hmm. I'll have the evening there. Yeah. If not, I'll set up top somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. That would yeah. be that'd be the best advice. Um, that's all we had, everyone. That's all, folks. Um, thank hey, you for watching. <laughs> Watching and listening to this episode. Remember to keep hunting. Keep fishing. Enjoy the freaking process. Make sure to give us a rating and a review on Apple and Spotify and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Thanks, guys. See ya.